Good evening, everybody, and what an evening it's been with the O.J. Simpson verdict and President Clinton's State of the Union address. I'm Ann Ryder. And I'm John Stare. It was less than an hour ago that the jury declared O.J. Simpson responsible for the deaths of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman. The mostly white jury deliberated for 17 hours before reaching the verdict. Let's go now to KNBC, our television station in Los Angeles, for the very latest coverage of the... Uh, uh, this is uh, Daniel Petricelli, the uh, attorney for the plaintiff, making a statement to the press. Well, what I was going to say, Paul, is that the jury has a day off tomorrow. The attorneys and the judge will meet tomorrow to figure out how this next phase, punitive damages, will go. And then we understand they'll be back in court on Thursday morning where the jury will decide... Uh, what the damages will be that will be awarded to the uh, Brown family or the Brown estate as well as the Goldman family. I think I remember, the punitive damages. Yeah, I think are. I remember Manny saying the punitive damage part of this case might take the better part of two days, maybe a little longer. Um, I'm sorry, who are we going to now? Paul. Okay, Conan. Conan, Conan Nolan's yeah. on the phone. Yeah, go ahead, Conan. I believe they're in the hallway here in the Double Tree. There wasn't going to be a news conference now that are, apparently they are going to make a statement. Uh, again, within the confines of the gag order, which is still in effect. Once again, this is KNBC coverage of the verdict of attorney, in the O.J. Simpson but, uh, trial. You see the Goldman for, uh, family standing behind uh, Daniel Petrucelli, uh, their the attorney. Here and make a few comments with regard to their reaction to The coverage that we're verdict, bringing you is from our sister station and, uh, in Los Angeles, KNBC. Think, uh, and they, of course, scrambling to cover this breaking news story tonight as well. For those of you who just might be joining us, this was a victory tonight for the Goldman family and also the family Baker of uh, well Nicole Brown Simpson. Attorney. Nobody knew just how good an attorney <laughs> Daniel Petrocelli was. He the jury unanimously found in their there's, favor there's no question in the civil about trial that. against their victims. We have the verdict tonight, a unanimous verdict uh, finding that... Uh, Manny Madrano pointed out uh, earlier... ...in the deaths of his former wife, Nicole Brown Simpson. Well, he said that uh, this was... Woman. This was great lawyering. He said he start slowly and build as he went. We've got some muddled sound right here, so while we do, we'll tell you that O.J. Simpson has already left the courthouse. He is... Uh, we want to make clear to everyone that um, we are very grateful for this jury's verdict, and we feel that there has been vindication for Ron's death and Nicole's death. However, this trial is still in progress. It is not concluded. The court's confidentiality order is still in effect. Proceedings will be resuming on Thursday, so we will not be able to get into uh, the merits of the case or discuss anything in regard to the case, but I would like to have Mr. Goldman say just a few words to you. Okay. I'll just step this way, sir. This is, uh, by the way, Fred Goldman, of course, is the father of Ronald Goldman. Today's two and a half years a little over two and a half years, and we finally have justice for Ron and Nicole. <coughs> and we have it because of Dan, Petricelli, Ed Medvin, Tom Lambert, Peter Gelbloom, Yvette, Yvette Molinero, Hugh <coughs> Foster. Oh, my mind's going crazy, I'm sorry. The, the names just aren't coming quick enough. And it was done with honesty and dignity complete truth and our family is grateful for a verdict of responsibility which is all we ever wanted and we have it thank god mr goldman can i ask you at the moment you heard this <coughs> this verdict sitting there in this court i mean you've sat through now two verdicts of course the one in the criminal trial and now this one what went through your mind as you heard that uh, verdict read Oh, I think just what I said. Thank God for some justice for Ron and Nicole. We've waited two years, seven months, and some number of days, and if I could add quick enough, I'd figure it out. But we're enormously grateful and thankful, and I can't tell you how grateful and how thankful. And, and like I said, if it weren't for, for all these wonderful attorneys who, whose passion, whose belief, whose willingness to put in 24 hours a day for all this time is proof of the kind of people they are and I think that's part of the reason why we're where we're at today. Hold on. A little smile on your face. It's been a long time. Yes, it has. Uh, I, would just, I would just like to Miles say Ron, on behalf of all of us who worked on this case, all of my wonderful colleagues, what an extraordinary honor and privilege it has been to represent this man and his family. They have conducted themselves with 
extraordinary grace and dignity throughout this entire unspeakable tragedy. And as I told Fred earlier, You're listening just to a few the, moments uh, ago, attorney Daniel Ron Petricelli, attorney for proud. the Goldman Ron family, the uh, Goldman family and the Brown family Ron. getting a victory tonight, unanimous decision oh, okay. in the so case of the O.J. Simpson civil trial on all eight counts against O.J. Simpson. Ron Goldman, of course, very emotional last uh, fall when the verdict was uh, announced in the criminal trial of O.J. Simpson, O.J. Simpson being found not guilty. And a settlement was offered at that time, but the Goldman family refused to take it, looking for some justice, they said, for their son's death and for the death of Nicole Brown Simpson. And you just heard Fred Goldman tell us that he believes that they got a measure, a measure of justice tonight. You are watching live special coverage here. Now, we have been with our KNBC, that's our uh, NBC affiliate in Los Angeles. Um, as you can see, this is all just uh, recently happened. In fact, it's all come down just in the last hour. As a matter of fact, uh, the verdict came down during President Clinton's State of the Union address. Basically, this jury found, with a preponderance of the evidence, that O.J. Simpson caused the battery and the deaths of Nicole Brown Simpson and of Ron Goldman. You're looking live now at a picture of O.J. Simpson's house. O.J. Simpson uh, returning to his home tonight after the verdict was announced. And let's listen in now to the coverage from KNBC in Los Angeles. Is just pulling in after one stop at Baskin and Robbins from the courthouse. Uh, Tracy, let me ask you about this. What about the eye contact with the jurors? What were they doing as the, as the verdict was read this afternoon? Well, uh, Colleen, it's interesting. Um, the majority of uh, the jury members uh, simply stared straight ahead and didn't really look at anybody. But there were two or three I caught um, staring over at the plaintiff. Um, a couple sitting out on my end, in fact, closer to the uh, spectator area, uh, looked over and they looked at Fred Goldman and they looked over and they looked at Daniel Petrocelli. Um, but other than that, not a whole lot of uh, reaction, not a whole lot this of... This was O.J. Simpson the, uh, about a half hour ago, um, especially leaving when the courthouse were, uh, in Santa Monica to go uh, the home. The jurors basically just sat, stared straight ahead. He is home now, now. when the judge asked the jury to leave, and then after the verdict was read, and then when they came back in about five minutes later... O.J. Um, Simpson made no comment to the press as he walked out of the courtroom the, uh, tonight. Faces, uh, as you can see, rather somber the face faces. at the news that um, but really the not jury a whole lot found of him, uh, no tears from found the that he did cause the death of Ron Goldman no, uh, and Nicole Brown Simpson. Any kind of outward this is special coverage from Channel 13. Tracy, uh, we're seeing on from uh, we're looking at KNBC, and we're going to officially start our newscast. We'll be back in just a second. Now, Channel 13 Eyewitness News brings you Central Indiana's number one late newscast, Night Beats, with John Stair and Ann Ryder. You have been watching coverage from KNBC, our NBC affiliate in Los Angeles, of uh, Trim incredible verdict tonight, a tremendous news night um, when you consider that uh, President Clinton's State of the Union speech and also the verdict tonight from L.A. that's a victory for the Goldman family and family of Ron Goldman and also the family of Nicole Brown Simpson. And a lot of folks uh, watching that verdict tonight and a mixed reaction from Hoosiers about it. This was a scene downtown at a watering hole as the verdict was announced. Nightbeat reporter Roger Harvey continues our Team 13 coverage now with the reaction that he saw. Roger? Ann and John, good evening. Uh, this is a look at the Rock Bottom uh, restaurant downtown. A couple of hours ago, this place was packed with people wondering what exactly was going to happen. When the verdict came in, the reactions were mixed. Here's some videotape of some of the reaction moments after the verdict was announced. I think he was guilty. I'm a little surprised that he was actually found guilty. I don't have a lot of faith in the, in the legal system out there, but um, like I said, I think it's, it's about time he, he pays for what he did. You think justice was served today? Not really, because how can you find a man innocent and then say he, you could take all his money? You know, how can you find him innocent one day and say he's guilty the next day? I mean, it can't be both ways. Either either innocent or he's guilty. Had it been a normal human being um, and not some celebrity, I think we would have gotten a guilty verdict to begin with. So it's kind of sad to say that we have to spend this much money to get what we wanted to hear in the first place. The reaction from most of the people here was that they felt this was a long time coming. A lot of people I spoke with felt that this should have been the reaction, the decision that should have been made in the criminal trial some, uh, uh, some time ago. Uh, that's basically the, uh, the reaction here. It felt much like it did in the criminal trial, Ann and John, along racial lines. All right, thank you, Roger. That's Roger Harvey reporting from downtown tonight. And, of course, 
We are monitoring the situation in Los Angeles. We are looking at uh, all the material coming in via satellite from our affiliate station there, as well as NBC and CNN, and we'll bring you the very latest as it becomes available to us. That's right. We're keeping an eye on the video there. Now, uh, we continue our team coverage now of the Simpson verdict with Night Beat reporter Jack Martin at the studios of WHHH, where Talk of the Verdict is lighting up the phone lines. Let's go out to Jack right now. Jack? Well, here we are at Hoosier 96, and this is an urban radio station. And you know something? When a criminal verdict came down, the preponderance of uh, people calling in basically was that they supported the acquittal. It's a little different tonight. Here's a sampling of, of what we've been hearing. What do you think about the verdict? Uh, I don't think he did it, but I think he did know who did do it. You don't think he did it, but he knows who did it? Yeah. Okay. What do you think about that? That ain't right, because he, man, he ain't guilty. He ain't killed him. He, that's not right, because he didn't kill him? Right, he didn't kill him. All right, well, thanks for your opinion. I thought he six. So what do you think about the juice? I don't know. I think it's kind of crazy. I think he did it. You think he did it? Yeah. So you agree with the verdict? Yeah. All right, well, thanks for the call. Yeah. How about he six? What do you think? Man, they don't have enough evidence to convict. If they would have thought this case was so important, they would have spent more time deliberating, deliberating well, about it. So there you have a little bit of a sampling. Now, although most of the people you heard in that little piece we put together said they feel O.J. is still innocent, and although the Santa Monica jury found him liable in the deaths of uh, Ron Goldman and, and his ex-wife, Nicole Brown, I guess apparently when we left to put this together, Jeff, you were getting a lot of calls supporting uh, the fact that uh, a lot of folks feel he's guilty. Uh, yeah, I'll, actually all of my listeners now are lawyers all of a sudden, but uh, actually still split down the middle, it's pretty much 50-50, but people are a lot more passionate over whether he's guilty or innocent. They have a lot to say about it. It looks like they've done their homework. And, uh, you know, this calls are still coming in, so we're going to take some more. All right, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, the lines are still lining up here. As you can see, it's probably going to be that way the rest of the evening. Now, as you know, there's going to be a lot more as the, uh, the jury starts uh, deliberating in terms of the punitive phase, exactly how much money uh, they might find O.J. to be liable. So that's the story here. And I'm going to send it back to you, John and Neil. All right, thank you. Jack Martin reporting from Hot 96. And the jury will gather to uh, start deciding the punitive phase um, of this on Thursday. Now, the verdicts came as no surprise to IU Law Professor Henry Carlson, who predicted them live during our 10 o'clock broadcast on Channel 23. We asked Carlson, what comes next for Simpson? Well, what's going to happen now is the jury is going to be presented with information dealing with the wealth of O.J. Simpson. And the question is going to be, what size judgment against him would deter him from doing this again and punish him in such a manner that he would not do something like this again? It's really punishment. There has to be a reasonable relationship between the amount of actual damages and the punitive damages. But in this case, they could be significant. In this case, it could be significant. So here is a recap of tonight's top story, a verdict in the O.J. Simpson civil trial. The jury found Simpson liable for the deaths of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman. It was a unanimous verdict. The jury awarded the plaintiffs $8.5 million in compensatory damages. And they still have to decide an award for punitive damages. You can stay with Channel 13 for complete coverage of reaction to the Simpson verdict. We'll have more tomorrow morning beginning at 5 on Eyewitness News Sunrise as well. And we have some breaking news now from Los Angeles. Let's go back and rejoin the coverage of our sister station, KNBC, in Los Angeles. This is the Brown family. Well, it's the same deal. CNN, less than a minute. So we've got a minute left to go. John Kelly, of course, uh, a New York attorney who has represented uh, the Goldmans, or, I'm sorry, the Browns throughout all of this, uh, his arm around Judita Brown. Again, you're listening to coverage daughter. from WNBC, and, uh, or excuse me, KNBC, sister, our sister uh, station in Dominique, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Denise, As the Brown, Brown family Judea, prepares to make a statement, you see on the right side of your screen, that's Juditha Brown. She is the mother fact, of Nicole Brown verdict. Simpson. Uh, and uh, and Dominique, I think, uh, on the left, she's in need. Yeah, we were told, we're be a minute. We're out of here that we were told they had left a lot earlier than they did. And that and would be the attorney, John Kelly, in the center. We the want to point out the Brown family is not the recipient of any money in this situation because under uh, the way that it's structured legally, uh, O.J. Simpson's children would have actually had to file the suit because they're, they're the direct heirs. The beneficiaries of the money are the Goldman family, Fred Goldman, the uh, father of Ron Goldman and his family. And there you see uh, How many times did we have the Brown, judge say to John the Kelly, Mr. father of Nicole Brown Simpson, he, uh, to the left of your screen, the attorney embracing the mother and the father of Nicole Brown Simpson, the attorney John Kelly, 
who uh, represented the Brown family in this case. Your reaction Dr. Brown family to this verdict, which and found uh, that O.J. Simpson very was close responsible all in the deaths of uh, Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. Family, well, first of all, we agree with the verdict, Charles, and uh, you know we're just happy that we're halfway through the ordeal, and uh, we're looking forward to the second phase of it right now. I just want to say that uh, you know the Browns right now can't answer any questions or, or give any answers because of the ongoing nature of the litigation. But uh, I mean, we're coming near the the public end of more suffering, more pain more loneliness and more loss than any one family uh, can be expected to endure. And, uh, you know, the Browns privately will always carry this along with them, and uh, that's regrettable. Uh, also, I think everybody should remember uh, what a vibrant person Nicole was. You know, that she was a great mother, daughter, sister, and friend, and no jury verdict's ever going to change any of that. And uh, she was an extraordinary person, and we're just happy that uh, a jury collectively looked at the evidence and, and told the world once and for all that, that Nicole's and Ron's lives mattered. Now, I understand that this is going on to the next phase, so you're limited in what you can say, but if you can share with people who are watching, folks, your reaction to this after having gone through that first trial and now the second one with a much different verdict, what went through your mind when the verdict was handed down? What are you thinking now? Uh, I'm thinking what a great family this is. Uh, how happy am I got to, to know all of them? I spent a lot of very... Uh, private, sensitive moments with them. I, I love them. They're great. And uh, I'm really happy for them, too. And we should explain to the audience that the reason they don't want to talk is because we're going into the second phase. We're, we're still under gag. I'm being careful with my comments also, Charles. John, and, can, um, could they just talk a little bit about what we were thinking about as the verdict was read? They must have some sort of reaction that is not going to uh, impinge at all on, on the gag order. Just how they feel. How you doing, Judy? Oh, mine hasn't sunk in yet. I'd like to wait. Okay. What about you, uh, Mr. Brown? Uh, the Mutual Admiration Society. We love John. <laughs> Good answer, Lou. Uh, how would have been an African American juror on the panel? Excuse me? Do you wish there would have been an African American juror? Uh, you know what? We weren't looking uh, at the jury through any sort of uh, colored or tinted glasses whatsoever. We were looking at a jury of 12 men and women uh, that reflected all the uh, stratus of society, and we were glad they looked at it closely and came up with the verdict. Color, race, played uh, no part in this verdict. John, do you think, though, that, that the public might view this in racial, along racial lines, as was the case with the first verdict, after all? I can see absolutely no reason why they would, Charles. Okay. Uh, how long do you expect the second phase, uh, the uh, punitive phase, to go on for? Uh, probably no more than a day in terms of our case. A little bit more. Uh, shouldn't be more than a couple days total. Mr. And Mr. Mrs. Brown, Fred Goldman said that after all this time, he finally felt a sense of justice being uh, delivered here. Do you feel that same sense? Mr. Brown? Yes or no? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I don't think justice was done in the first one, but that's uh, something I shouldn't be talking about. Okay, one more question, then we're That's Mr. We're done Brown, tonight. not uh, Fred Goldman. No more questions. How do you feel? <laughs> I feel terrific. All right, we're out of here. All right, that was, uh, you heard from Hank Brown and uh, Judy Brown, the parents of Nicole Brown Simpson and their attorney, John Kelly. As, uh, the, as they reacted to the verdicts tonight, if you're just joining us very quickly, the jury voted unanimously against O.J. Simpson. Eight questions they had to answer tonight, and the bottom line is the jury believed that he did willfully cause the death of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. But it bears mention that he cannot now be tried again criminally. That is considered double jeopardy. So at this point, it is a money matter, but... Uh, the family of Ron Goldman uh, raised their hands and uh, shouted justice uh, as they came out. So, and, and we have differing opinions on all this tonight. And we're, of course, monitoring the situation from Los Angeles. We've just been told that O.J. Simpson has arrived home. He is now apparently in with his children, explaining the verdict to his children. Uh, you saw coverage before as uh, O.J. Simpson left the courtroom. Here it is. This was, uh, I guess, about 45 minutes ago now when O.J. Simpson walked out of the courtroom. Obviously, a lot of flash bulbs going off. He's being taunted by people in the crowd. A huge crowd gathered outside of the Santa Monica courtroom. He made no statements to the press whatsoever as he got into his black suburban and headed back to Brentwood, his home where his children had been waiting. And as again, as I said, again, we're told right now he's explaining the verdicts to his children at his home in Brentwood. Unlike in the uh, criminal trial, there were no cameras in the courtroom. We're told that O.J. really showed very little to no emotion as the verdicts were read. This is Fred Goldman and his family um, obviously celebrating. Let's 
We're Go continuing. To a break. We're continuing to monitor the situation, and we'll have continuing coverage of the O.J. Simpson civil trial verdict in just a moment. Closed captioning of Eyewitness News is brought to you in part by Ameritech. Every February, something very big happens at your Indiana Honda dealers. Tax time rolls around. And with a full line of Honda models, including Accords, still on hand, just think. You've got us exactly where you want us. Better go see your Honda dealer. Hundred percent hardwood frames. Long-lasting beauty. Heavily upholstered cushions. Plush. Spring edge construction. Comfort. Custom tailored self-decking. Luxury. The American Signature Collection. Exclusively at Value City Furniture. Value City Furniture. You just can't do any better. On its Triumph National Tour, the hit Broadway musical Raisin comes to Indianapolis, starring multiple Grammy Award winner Steve Bryson. Also starring Lynette Hawkins Stevens. The hit Broadway musical Raisin coming to the Mirage Theater Sunday, February 9th. Get your tickets now or charge by phone. 1,500 vehicles up to $10,000 off. Hundreds of vehicles must go. Daniel 500 car, truck, and van, inventory disposal. We'd rather sell them than pay taxes on them. Every new hot on sale. Save up to $3,000. 97 Civic four doors with air and all this, just 79 bucks a month. New 97 Accord LX four doors from $159 a month. Like new lease return Accords up to 2500 below book value. Loaded Honda Accords with all this from 81 bucks a month. Buy with no money down, no payments till summer. They've all got to go. Today through Saturday at Dan Young Honda. Welcome back to our continuing coverage tonight of the O.J. Simpson verdict. And we're going to go ahead and wrap up the situation in Los Angeles tonight. NBC reporter Mark Strassman has the latest. O.J. Simpson arrived knowing this verdict was trouble. Of late, his lawyers had been pushing for a mistrial. But not nearly as hard as his accusers, the family of Ron Goldman and the family of Nicole Brown Simpson, had pushed this civil suit, their second and final bid for vindication. Simpson found responsible for killing Ron Goldman and for battering his ex-wife Nicole that same night. Different trial, different jury, different verdict. And at long last, the Goldman and Brown families and Simpson critics everywhere have what they've wanted since the criminal trial. This lawsuit is, as I've said before, it's an, it's an opportunity, the only opportunity left for our family to get justice. This time, jurors saw 30 more photos of Simpson in the shoes identical to the ones worn by the killer. This time, they heard from Simpson himself and did not believe him. This time, they did not hear from Mark Furman or believe the LAPD framed Simpson. And this time, nine of the jurors were white. Now Simpson and his jurors move into this trial second phase, a separate hearing to determine how much Simpson is worth and how much he should pay as punishment. But no cash amount will bring back Ron Goldman or Nicole Brown Simpson. O.J. Simpson leaves branded by infamy. A jury says he's a killer. It's a stigma long overdue to many Americans and an outrage to his many supporters. Simpson found responsible for killing Ron Goldman and for battering his ex-wife Nicole the same night. Mark Strassman, NBC News. NBC reporter Mark Strassman in Los Angeles tonight. We will continue to monitor events in Los Angeles and bring you the very latest as it comes to us. Well, there's only one way to say it. President Clinton's State of the Union address got upstaged tonight. In Washington, Clinton gave his fourth State of the Union speech, and he spent most of it talking about education. The president said education is his number one priority as we approach the 21st century. Let's work together to meet these three goals. Every 8-year-old must be able to read. Every 12-year-old must be able to log onto the Internet. Every 18-year-old must be able to go to college, and every adult American must be able to keep on learning for a lifetime. Over five Congressman J.C. Watts said his party backs education, too, but in a way the country can afford. Because someone is going to have to pay the piper. And you know what it's going to be? 
It's going to be our kids and our grandkids. The American family is already overtaxed. Right now, the average family spends about half of every dollar they earn in some type of government tax or government fee. Watts is a former University of Oklahoma quarterback. The party chose him to give tonight's response after a successful speech at the Republican convention in San Diego last summer. New tonight, word from Los Angeles that actress Elizabeth Taylor has a brain tumor. Doctors say it is benign and her prognosis is good. Surgeons will remove the tumor in two weeks after an AIDS fundraiser celebrating Ms. Taylor's 65th birthday. It's the latest of many health problems to plague her. We're still monitoring Simpson coverage from Los Angeles. We'll be right back after this break. The problem. We pay tax on every car and minivan left in our lots by March 1st. The solution. Chrysler Plymouth February Tax Slash, where you get big deductions like package value savings on Plymouth Voyager or a special $3.59 a month lease on the luxurious Chrysler LHS with leather trim seats and power everything. Even drive the bright Plymouth Neon for a very flashy price. You get deductions so we don't have to pay tax. The great February Tax Slash, only until February 28th and only at your local Chrysler and Plymouth dealer. Congratulations to Airtron Heating and Cooling and B-Dry Systems, recipients of the first annual Better Business Bureau Quality Awards. These companies were recognized for their outstanding customer service and workmanship. Call for entries for the second annual BBB Quality Awards will take place in March. Don't miss this opportunity to let your company shine. For more information, call the Better Business Bureau at 488-2221. The Better Business Bureau, consumers and business working together. Here's how I see it. Bar spreads the floor with all these checkouts. That's how you drive the lane. I'm field. I want to be behind a big line. But at Marsh, I don't have to. Hey, Marsh really knows the fast break. If there are ever more than three in line at Marsh, we'll open another check stand. Guaranteed. Hey, I'm a really patient guy, but I don't like to wait in line. There's nothing like busting through the line. Take it from a guy who knows the three. The Marsh three in line guaranteed. Pay closer attention now. These are the cars and trucks on the Blossom Chevrolet lot. This is the taxes they'll pay on them. Here's you. Here's what you're driving. Now stay with me. The formula is really quite simple. Lots of cars here divided by a new car for you here. Subtract the tax burden from here. Add the savings for you squared times the pleasure of owning a new vehicle multiplied by two. Everybody wins. The winning formula is simple when you deal with the good people at Blossom. The Blossom tax sale. Everybody wins. Now, Bob Gregory's SkyTrack weather forecast, approved by the American Meteorological Society. Welcome back. We continue to monitor events in Los Angeles, and we'll go back there as the situation warrants. And because of the situation, we have abbreviated weather with the unabbreviated weatherman. Abbreviated weather, yes. As a matter of fact, uh, quite a difference a year makes. Last year on this state, minus 12 for a low. That set a record. Three was our high. Today, we hit 50 degrees. We were nearly 20 degrees above the norm. Now, when you get up in the morning and send the children to school, you better bundle up. Here's the way it looks. We'll kind of briefly give you uh, tomorrow's forecast. We'll have a morning low of 28 degrees, and then 35 will be our best mark in the afternoon. But as we finish out the week, see we have mostly sunny skies for Thursday and Sunday highs. Uh, both days there hitting 40 degrees. The important thing is the lows will stay in the 20s throughout the period, so we have no weather extremes that is headed our way. Uh, during the overnight period, could be a couple of spots, might see a very light flurry, and, and that really is about it. But the winds are going to be rather brisk tomorrow morning, so you want to bundle the kids up because wind chill temperature is probably in the single number, so it's going to mm -hmm. feel very cold. Okay. Okay, Thanks. see you later. And sports going on tonight. The Pacers and the Hoosiers, a uh, rough night for them. Not a good mm -hmm. night. The Pacers had a chance to climb over 500 for the first time this year, and they did not get it done. The final, the Pacers lost in Orlando. Your final score right here, 111-87. Ron Cycli had 22 points in this ball game. Reggie Miller with 18 to lead the Pacers as they lost. College Hoops, the Indiana Hoosiers on the road at Iowa. Bad night for the Hoosiers. They've lost three in a row now, 75-67. Your final score, Coach Knight's crew now four and six in the Big Ten, and they're not looking very good these days. Jason Collier had 16. Girls High School sectionals began tonight. Number one, Perry Meridian continues to lead the way. The class team to watch right now, they beat Ron Colley 85-44. to in the opener. That's a brief look at sports. Again, Pacers losing and Indiana losing as well. All right. Thank you, Dave. Okay. In addition to monitoring the Simpson coverage, we have a special report on, on ATM machines that we think you'll want to see right after this. Kraft or Meyer brand? Uncle Ben's or Meyer? Dole or Meyer? Jeff or Meyer? 
Kellogg's, or Meyer. You won't taste the difference either. For quality and selection in the bargain, buy Meyer brand. Get 48-ounce Meyer oils, vegetable, canola, and canola blend, $1.49. And a select variety of Meyer cereal, $1.39. Life's most amazing moments are on real TV. The first two and a half minutes go as planned. But when a line gets tangled, it all falls apart. This guy cuts his shoot off at 500 feet. Will he make it? Then when you go 120 miles an hour, you better have a backup plan. That's what saves these two boaters' lives. Plus, she may be paralyzed, but she's the queen bee at mountain biking and snow skiing. Amazing people, incredible events. See them on real TV. TV. Wednesday at 7 on Channel 13, WTHR. It's inventory reduction sale days at Watson's. If you've been waiting for a deal on a slate pool table, now's the time. Eight-foot slate pool tables, only $6.99 installed. Big selection and guaranteed lowest prices on tanning beds. Like this one, only $11.99. That's $44 a month. If you're thinking of a pool this summer, now's the time to save money. 24-foot pool package installed, just $10.99. Watson's has a variety of spas in different sizes and colors. Save 40 to 60% now on all in-stock spas. That's Watson's. Number one in cars, number one in trucks, five of the ten best sellers. And now is the time to save during your Indiana Ford dealer's inventory tax clearance. Lease a new Ford Ranger for just $129 a month. That's just $129 a month to lease America's best-selling compact truck. Or buy a new Ranger and get $1,000 cash back direct from Ford. Pay big taxes? No way! We pass big savings on to you. Hurry, your Indiana Ford dealer's inventory tax clearance ends soon. Tonight, the trial date is set for the man accused of gunning down another man at a local bank machine. Now, take a look at surveillance video of that attack. Police say Michael Saka shot Joel Good in the neck during the robbery on the east side. So how safe are you when you use an ATM? Nightbeat reporter Kevin Bradley discovered many people don't follow even the simplest safety precautions. Each time you step up to use an ATM machine, you're taking a chance your number could be up. It didn't take but a second for me to get it. Joel Good is one of an estimated 42 people a day in the U.S. who are mugged while using ATM machines. Good was shot in the neck and left a paraplegic at an ATM robbery last September. And just last month, police suspect this man robbed and raped a woman at an ATM on the east side of Indianapolis. There are an estimated 87,000 ATMs in the U.S. They're everywhere. So ask yourself, what's more likely to attract a robber than someone at a money machine. I feel safe, but I feel vulnerable, whether I'm with people or not. Especially at night, it's not safe. According to the National Insurance Institute, the most dangerous time to use an ATM is between the hours of 7 p.m. and midnight. During that time, 49% of all ATM crimes, such as forced withdrawal of funds or robbery of one's personal property, occurs. But there are ways you can protect yourself from becoming a victim. Notice this woman. Even though it's broad daylight, she's doing the right thing, looking around for anything suspicious. Always look around the area of the ATM. If it's dark and an ATM's light is out, leave. If you notice anything suspicious, then go to another location. These tips may sound obvious, but look at these women. They could be prime targets. One fumbles through her purse looking for a card. The other leaves the ATM with her money out in clear view. Have your card ready and in your hand when approaching an ATM, and don't display your money. Put it in your purse or wallet and count it later. The receipt contains some information that could be used uh, by someone with bad intentions to, to get at your money. By being cautious and using some street smarts, you can protect both your money and your safety at an ATM. Now, here are some other ways you can protect yourself from ATM theft. When using a drive-up ATM, Keep your doors locked and windows rolled up until you're ready to make your transaction. Keep your PIN number a secret and shield it when using an ATM. And try to use bank machines at malls, convenience stores, or in supermarkets. And remember, if you can, use an automatic teller machine during the daylight hours. Now, good advice. Thank you, Kevin. Re quick recap of our top story tonight, the O.J. Simpson verdict. The jury found Simpson liable in the deaths of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. This is video of O.J. leaving the courtroom about an hour ago. It was a unanimous verdict. The jury awarded the plaintiffs $8.5 million in compensatory damages. 
They still have yet to decide an award for punitive damages. This is video of Simpson taken just about an hour ago as he was en route home from the courthouse after hearing the verdict. We're told that he's now with his children at his Brentwood home and he's explaining the verdicts to them. And uh, this story is still developing. Uh, the verdicts were read. Uh, you see the Goldman family there right now. The uh, Goldman family, obviously, a much different reaction. Happiness from the Goldman family. We'll have a complete wrap-up of this situation tomorrow morning, beginning at 5 a.m. on Eyewitness News Sunrise. Good night.